Hello, everyone. I want to give uh, give some people a, a little extra time to get here. We'll probably start at about 10.05. All right, everyone. Uh, hello, I'm going to open the hearing now. Uh, let the record show that the time is 10.05 and the public hearing is now officially open. Note that we will be recording this meeting. This hearing is for the renewal of the Nijipti's pollutant, excuse me, the New Jersey Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Discharge to Surface Water Combined Sewer Overflow Permits for Joint Meeting of Essex and Union Counties Wastewater Treatment Plant and the City of Elizabeth. We often use the acronym NIGIPTES in referring to the New Jersey Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Program. My name is Joe Manick. I am the hearing officer and I am section chief in the Bureau of Surface Water and Pretreatment Permitting within the Division of Water Quality at the Department of Environmental Protection, otherwise referred to as the Department or NJDEP. Jonathan Lekitron is an engineer within our bureau and he will be providing instructions on how to provide testimony today, while Josie Costaldo is the case manager for both permits. And I will begin with an overview of the subject permits. Oh, excuse me, and she will provide an overview of the subject permits. Also here today are many NJDEP staff, including Susan Rosenwinkel, Assistant Director of the Division of Water Quality, and others who are part of the CSO program or part of other NJDEP programs. I will now be providing some general information about the public hearing process, which will take about four minutes. Marcelo Gracia will then present this information in Spanish. We will then provide an overview of Microsoft Teams and a short summary of the permits in English and then in Spanish. This introductory information should take about 20 minutes in total. 
as established at the Najipti's regulations of the New Jersey Administrative Code at 7 colon 14a. Subchapter 15, this is a non adversarial public hearing, which means that the department is here to listen and take testimony as part of our regulatory process. The purpose of this hearing is to provide the interested public, including the affected communities, with an opportunity to be heard on these draft proposed draft permit actions. The department will be accepting verbal and written statements today. Please note that both verbal and written statements have equal weight. So if someone is not comfortable speaking and just has a written statement prepared, they can submit them electronically where they will receive equal weight with verbal testimony. The email address for written comments is dwq underscore bswp at dep.nj.gov. We will now add that address to the chat. The purpose for this hearing is to receive your comments and concerns. The department will respond to all significant and relevant comments, both verbal and written, in response to comments document, which will be issued as part of the final Egyptis permit decisions. The permittees and each person who has submitted comments will receive an electronic copy of the final decision document provided you give us your email address. We will also provide a copy to anyone else who requests it, whether or not you submitted comments. Please be sure to leave your email address in the chat or send it to dwq underscore bswp at dep.nj.gov if you want to receive a copy. Please note that the public comment period will end at 11.59 p.m. on July 14th, 2023. If you would like to provide verbal comments today, please put your name, organization, and email address in the chat, and we will call your name when it is your turn. When I call you, please clearly state and spell your first and last name for the record. We will have a court reporter assigned to transcribe the recorded testimony. If speakers are speaking on behalf of a particular organization, we ask that you identify that organization. We want to hear from everybody, and we want to give everybody here the opportunity to speak. In view of time limitations, I'm asking each speaker to limit their testimony to five minutes. Individual speakers may only testify once until we hear from each every person who is here and wishes to give testimony. If time permits and there is an opportunity at the end of the hearing and a person wants to testify for a second time, we will do our best to accommodate you. We're asking that all speakers and members of the audience respect the right of each person here to be heard and refrain from any behavior that could interfere with the presentation of testimony. This hearing will end at the close of testimony or at noon, whichever occurs first. This same information I just read will now be read in Spanish by one of our staff, Marcelo Gracia. After that, we will turn the discussion over to Jonathan Lequitron, who will provide an overview of Microsoft Teams. And after that, Josie Costaldo will then give some factual information about the Nijipti's permits. Marcelo. Hola, abriré la audiencia en este momento. Deje que el registro muestre que la hora es 10.10 y la audiencia pública ya está oficialmente abierta. Tenga en cuenta que grabemos esta junta. Esta audiencia se lleva a cabo por la renovación del permiso para descarga de aguas de superficie de desbordamiento de alcantarillado combinado del sistema de eliminación de descargas de contaminaciones de Nueva Jersey, NJPDS, para la planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales de Joint Meeting de los condados Essex y Union y la ciudad de Elizabeth. A menudo, usaremos el acrónimo NJPDS cuando nos referimos al sistema de eliminaciones de descargas de contaminantes de Nueva Jersey. Mi nombre es... Joe Manick, soy el oficial de la audiencia pública y el jefe de sección de la Oficina de Permisos de Aguas de Superficie y para el Tratamiento de la División de Calidad del Agua en el Departamento de Protección Ambiental, también denominado el Departamento o NJDEP. Jonathan Lakisharan es un ingeniero dentro de nuestra oficina y brindará instrucciones sobre cómo dar testimonio hoy, mientras que Josie Castaldo es la administradora de casos para los dos permisos y presentará una descripción general de los permisos pertinentes. También hay aquí hoy muchos empleados de NJDEP, incluyendo a Susan Rosenwinkel, subgerente de la División de Calidad del Agua, y otras personas que son parte del programa CSO o de otros programas en el NJDEP. Ahora, brindaré información general sobre el proceso de la audiencia pública, lo que tomará unos cuatro minutos. Luego, Marcelo Gracia presentará esta información en español. A continuación, proporcionaremos una descripción general de Microsoft Teams y un resumen breve de los permisos en inglés y luego en español. Esta información introductora tomará unos 20 minutos en total. Como se establecen las regulaciones de NJPDS, el Código Administrativo de Nueva Jersey, 714A, subcapítulo 15, 
Esta es una audiencia pública no contenciosa, lo cual significa que el departamento está aquí para escuchar y tomar testimonio como parte de nuestro proceso regulatorio. El propósito de esta audiencia es brindar al público interesado, incluidas las comunidades afectadas, la oportunidad de ser escuchados con respecto a estas actividades de los borradores de permisos propuestos. El departamento aceptará declaraciones verbales y por escrito el día de hoy. Tengan en cuenta que las declaraciones por escrito y las verbales tendrán la misma importancia. Así que, si alguien no se siente cómodo de hablar y solamente tiene una declaración por escrito preparada, puede enviarla de forma electrónica y se le dará la misma importancia que, su que un testimonio verbal. El correo electrónico para enviar comentarios por escrito es dwq-bswp.dep.ng.gov. Ahora añadiremos el correo al chat. A propósito de esta audiencia es recibir sus comentarios y preocupaciones. El departamento responderá a todos los comentarios significativos y pertinentes, tanto verbales como por escrito, en un documento de respuesta a comentarios que se publicará como parte de las decisiones finales sobre los permisos de NJPDS. Los provisionarios y todas las personas que hayan presentado comentarios recibirán una copia electrónica del documento con la determinación final, siempre que nos hayan indicado su correo electrónico. También entregaremos copias a quienes lo soliciten, aunque no hayan enviado comentarios. Asegúrense de dejar su correo electrónico en el chat o enviarlo a dwq-bswp.dep.ng.gov si quieren recibir una copia. Tengan en cuenta que el periodo para enviar comentarios públicos Públicos terminará el 14 de julio de 2023 a las 8.59 pm. Si desean presentar comentarios públicos de manera verbal hoy, escriban su nombre, organización y correo electrónico en el chat y los llamaremos por su nombre cuando sea su turno. Cuando los llame, digan y deletren su nombre y apellido con claridad para el registro. Tendremos un taquígrafo judicial asignado para transcribir el testimonio grabado. Si alguien hablará en representación de una organización, les pedimos que identifique la organización. Queremos escuchar a todos y darles la oportunidad de hablar aquí. Debido al tiempo limitado, les pido que su testimonio no excede los cinco minutos. Cada uno solamente podrá hablar una vez hasta que escuchemos a todas las personas que estén aquí y desean dar testimonio. En caso de que el tiempo lo permita y sea posible hacerlo, al final de la audiencia, si una persona desea declarar por segunda vez, haremos todo lo posible para permitírselo. Pedimos que todos los que hablen y los miembros de la audiencia respeten el derecho de cada persona presente a ser escuchada y que eviten las conductas que pudieran inferir con las presentaciones del testimonio. Esta audiencia terminará cuando concluyan los testimonios al mediodía, lo que ocurra primero. Esta misma información que acabo de leer ahora será leída en español por uno de nuestros empleados, Marcelo Gracia. Después le daremos la, la palabra a Jonathan Lacharan, quien presentará una descripción general de Microsoft Teams. A continuación, Josie Castaldo uh, dará información factual sobre los permisos de NJPDS. Hi, my name is Jonathan Lakitron, and I will be speaking to you about commenting during the public hearing. In order to inform the NJDEP hearing officer of your interest in submitting verbal testimony, move your cursor around to open the Teams meeting toolbar, which will appear, which will appear near the bottom center of your screen. Click the chat icon to open the meeting chat box on the side of the screen. Type your full name and the name of the organization that you represent in the type a new meeting, uh, new message field at the bottom of the meeting chat box. When entering this information, use the following format. First name, last name, organization, and email address. See below for an example. Click the send icon or press enter on your keyboard to submit your message and notify the NJDEP hearing officer of your interest in submitting verbal testimony. To unmute your microphone to submit your testimony, reopen the Teams meeting toolbar. If you're muted, the mute icon appears in the toolbar. Click on the mute icon to unmute your microphone. The mute icon will change to a microphone. Begin your verbal testimony. To mute your microphone after submitting verbal testimony, open the Teams meeting toolbar. Click on the microphone icon to mute your microphone. The microphone icon will change to a mute icon. In order to turn your video feed during, uh, turn on your video feed during the public hearing, open the Teams meeting toolbar. Click the disabled camera icon to turn your video feed on. The disabled camera icon will change to a camera icon. Uh, to turn off your off the video, click the camera icon to the and the camera icon will change to a disabled camera icon. If you're using a phone, you can hit the star six keys to mute and unmute. 
The same information I just read will now be read in Spanish by Marcelo Gracia. After that, Josie Castaldo will provide an overview of the permits that were issued. Hola, mi nombre es Jonathan Lanquizadán y les estaré hablando sobre cómo comentar durante la, la audiencia pública. Para informar al oficial de la audiencia pública del NJDEP sobre su interés en dar testimonio verbal, mueve su cursor para que aparezca la barra de herramientas de reuniones de Teams en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Haga clic en el icono de chat para abrir el Meeting Chat a un lado de su pantalla. Escribe su nombre completo y el nombre de la organización que representa y su correo electrónico en el campo que dice Type a New Message. Escribe un mensaje nuevo en la parte inferior del Meeting Chat. Cuando escribe esta información, use el formato Nombre, más apellido, más organización, más correo electrónico. Vea el ejemplo abajo. Haga clic en el icono de enviar o presione la tecla Enter en su teclado para enviar su mensaje y notificar al oficial de la audiencia pública sobre su interés en dar testimonio verbal. Para activar su micrófono para presentar su testimonio verbal, reabra la barra de herramientas de reuniones de Teams. Si su micrófono está silenciado, si vea el icono de micrófono silenciado en la barra de herramientas, Haga clic en ese icono para activar su micrófono. El icono cambiará a el micrófono. Empieza a dar su testimonio verbal. Para silenciar su micrófono después de presentar su testimonio verbal, abre la barra de herramientas de reuniones de Teams y haga clic en el icono de micrófono para silenciarlo. El icono de micrófono cambiará al icono del micrófono silenciado. Para activar su cámara durante la audiencia pública, abre la barra de herramientas de reuniones de Teams y haga clic en el icono de la cámara desactivada para activar su video. El icono de la cámara desactivada cambiará al icono de la cámara. Para apagar su cámara, haga clic en el icono de la cámara. El icono de la cámara cambiará al icono de la cámara desactivada. Si se ha conectado por teléfono, para activar y silenciar su micrófono, por favor, oprima el asterisco 6. Esta misma información que acabo de leer será leída ahora en español por Marcelo Gracia. Después, Josy Castaldo presentará un resumen de los permisos que se han otorgado. Hello, my name is Josie Castaldo of the Bureau of Service Water and Pretreatment Permitting, and I am the case manager for the joint meeting of Essex and Union Counties, abbreviated to joint meeting, and the City of Elizabeth CSO permits. I'd like to give you some background on the subject of today's hearing. The renewal of the Najibdi's permits for the joint meeting permit number NJ0024741 and the City of Elizabeth permit number NJ0108782. The draft permits were issued on May 9, 2023, and both are posted on the NJDEP's Division of Water Quality CSO website. As stated in the draft permits, the comment period will end at 11.59 p.m. on July 14, 2023, in accordance with NJAC 714A-15.10 and 15.14. The permits issued are individual Najibdi's surface water permits for the combined sewer system of Elizabeth which is hydraulically connected to the Joint Meeting Wastewater Treatment Facility. Combined Sewer Overflows, or CSOs, are discharges from combined sewer systems. Combined sewer systems are sewers that were designed many decades ago to collect rainwater and snowmelt runoff, domestic sewage, and industrial wastewater in the same pipe. Combined sewer systems are still present in certain older cities in the state. Joint Meeting owns and operates a wastewater treatment plant named the Edward P. Decker Secondary Wastewater Treatment Facility. The facility treats wastewater collected in a 65 square mile service area in northern New Jersey, which includes the city of Elizabeth as a customer community. The joint meeting service area is primarily separately sewered areas, with the only confirmed combined sewer area in the system located within the city of Elizabeth. Joint meeting does not own or operate any CSO outfalls. The city of Elizabeth encompasses approximately 12.3 square miles in Union County, New Jersey. Elizabeth does not own or operate any wastewater treatment facilities. Dry weather wastewater flows from Elizabeth are conveyed to the Joint Meeting Wastewater Treatment Facility. When the conveyance capacity of the collection system and or the wastewater treatment facility is exceeded, combined, excess combined sewage flows pass through 29 CSO outfalls. These outfalls discharge combined sewage into the Arthur Kill and Newark Bay, which are classified as Saline Estuary 3, Category 2 waters, and the Elizabeth River, which is classified in different locations of the river as Freshwater 2, Non-Trout, Category 2 waters, and Saline Estuary 3, Category 2 waters. 
as per NGDEP's service water quality standards. To comply with federal and state CSO regulations, Joint Meeting and Elizabeth have committed to meet the requirements of the presumption approach, which requires elimination or capture of a minimum 85% of the annual average combined sewage collected in Elizabeth's system during wet weather. Presently, Elizabeth's system is at 58.2% capture. The projects, which include both gray and green infrastructure, are projected to achieve 85.1% capture. The projects proposed in the LTCP and in this renewal permit are projected to achieve 65.9% capture in the next five years. A major element of the already submitted long-term control plan includes the phase one upgrade of the Trenton Avenue pumping station, abbreviated to TAPS, which is now completed. This project increased the peak pumping rate of TAPS to pump at the peak hydraulic capacity. In order to pump at a higher rate, a change in the contractual agreement between joint meeting and the city of Elizabeth and upgrade, upgrades to TAPS to improve the reliability of the facility were required. Additional projects as part of the LTCP include, but are not limited to, select sewer separation, stormwater control, a green infrastructure pilot program, new wet weather pump station, new CSO treatment facility, regulator modifications, and interceptor improvements for additional conveyance. Some of these projects will also help address localized flooding. As per the long-term control plan and proposed Najipti's permit requirements, these projects are projected to be completed over multiple Najipti's permit cycles. This same information I just read will now be read by, in Spanish by Marcelo Gracia. After that, we will return to Joe Manick and begin taking testimony. Hola. Mi nombre es Josie Castaldo de la Oficina de Permisos de Aguas de Superficie y Pretratamiento y soy la administradora de casos para los permisos CSO del Joint Meeting de los Condados de Essex y Union, abrevado a Joint Meeting, en la ciudad de Elizabeth. Les quiero compartir algo de información de fondo sobre el tema de la audiencia de hoy, la renovación de los permisos de NJPDS para Joint Meeting, número de permiso NJ0024741, y la ciudad de Elizabeth, número de permiso NJ0108782. Los borradores de estos permisos fueron otorgados el 9 de mayo de 2023. Los dos están publicados en el sitio web de CSO, la División de Calidad del Agua de NJDP. Como se indican los borradores de los permisos, el periodo de comentarios terminará el 14 de julio de 2023 a las 11.59 pm, de acuerdo con los artículos 714A, 15.10 y... 15.14 del Código Administrativo de Nueva Jersey. Los permisos otorgados son permisos individuales de superficie del NJPDS para el sistema de alcantarillado combinado de Elizabeth, que está hidral, hidralcamente conectado a la planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales de Joint Meeting. Los de desbordamientos de alcantarillado combinado o CSO son descargas de sistemas de alcantarillado combinado. Los sistemas de alcantarillado combinado son alcantarillas que se diseñaron hace décadas para recolectar el agua de lluvia y deshielo, aguas residuales domésticas y aguas residuales industriales en la misma tubería. Los sistemas de alcantarillado combinado todavía están presentes en algunas ciudades más antiguas del estado. Eh, Joy Mirin posee y opera una planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales llamada la Instalación de Tratamiento Secundario de Aguas Residuales Edward P. Desher. La instalación trata aguas residuales recolectadas en un área de servicio de 65 millas cuadradas en el norte de Nueva Jersey, que, cual incluye la ciudad de Elizabeth como una comunidad de clientes. El área de servicio de Joint Meeting es principalmente áreas de alcantarillado superados, pero la única área de alcantarillado combinado confirmada localizada dentro de la ciudad de Elizabeth. Joint Meeting no posee ni opera desagües de CSO. La ciudad de Elizabeth engloba aproximadamente 12.3 millas cuadradas en el condado de Union, Nueva Jersey. Elizabeth no posee ni opera instalaciones de tratamientos de aguas residuales. Los flujos de aguas residuales durante el tiempo seco de Elizabeth son transportados a la planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales de Joint Meeting. Cuando se accede a la capacidad de transporte del sistema de recolección y o las plantas de tratamiento de aguas residuales, el exceso de aguas residuales combinadas pasa por 29 desagües de desbordamiento del alcantarillado combinado. Estos desagües vierten aguas residuales combinadas al Arthur Q y la Bahía de Newark, cuyas aguas se clasifican en la categoría de Estaurio Salino 3, categoría 2, y el río Elizabeth, cuyas aguas se clasifican en diferentes porciones del río como categoría 
Aguas Frescas 2, Sin Trucha, categoría 2, y categoría de Estadio Salino 3, categoría 2, según los estándares de calidad de aguas de superficie del NJDEP. Para cumplir con las regulaciones estatales y federales del CSO, Joe Miren y Elizabeth se han comprometido a cumplir con los requisitos del enfoque de presunción que exige la eliminación o la capción de un mínimo de 85% del promedio anual de aguas residuales combinadas recolectadas por el sistema de Elizabeth durante el tiempo lluvioso. En la actualidad, el nivel de capción de Elizabeth es el 58.2%. Los proyectos que incluyen infraestructura gris y verde se prevén captar el 85.1%. Los proyectos propuestos en el plan de control a largo plazo y en este renuevo del permiso se prevén captar el 65.9% en los siguientes cinco años. Un elemento importante en el plan de control a largo plazo que ya ha sido sometido incluye la primera fase de la mejora de la estación de bombeo Trenton Avenue, abreviada TAPS, que ya ha sido completada. Este proyecto ha aumentado la tasa máxima de bombeo de TAPS para bombear a la capacidad hidráulica máxima, para bombear al ritmo más alto fue requerido un cambio de él en el acuerdo contractual entre Joint Meeting y la ciudad de Elizabeth y las mejoras a TAPS para mejorar la fiabilidad de la instalación. Proyectos adicionales como parte del plan de control a largo plazo incluyen, pero no se limitan, la separación de selectos alcantarillados, control de aguas pluviales, un programa piloto de infraestructura verde, una nueva estación de bombeo durante el tiempo lluvioso, una nueva planta de tratamiento de CSO, modificaciones del regulador y mejoras del eh, interceptor para transporte adicional. Algunos de estos proyectos también ayudarán con las inundaciones localizadas. Según el plan de control a largo plazo y los requisitos propuestos de los permisos de NJPDS, se prevé finalizar estos proyectos entre va varios ciclos de permisos de NJPDS. Esta misma información que acabo de leer ahora se lee en español por Marcelo Gracia. Después volveremos con Jomarek y empezaremos a tomar testimonio. Hi everyone, uh, if you want to submit any verbal testimony, please enter in the chat your first and last name, organization name if any, and your email address, and the NJTP hearing officer will call you in order uh, to submit your verbal testimony. All right, uh, I see Suzanne Atman of New Jersey Future uh, would like to speak. Suzanne, go, please go ahead. Hi, Joe, good morning. Thank you. Yes, I'm gonna speak on behalf of New Jersey Future this morning. Um, so thank you, as always, to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection for this public hearing on these draft permits. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to provide comments that will allow for increased public engagement around CSOs and are a step toward improving water quality in New Jersey. New Jersey Future appreciates uh, the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection's hard work, as well as the permit holders' hard work on drafting these permits and supports requirements to reduce uh, combined sewer discharge to improve water quality. Addressing these water quality issues by reducing flooding and CSO discharges and ensuring proper maintenance of infrastructure are important tools to protect public health, the environment and economic development. We ask that the final permit um, and all future CSO permits have clear conditions and requirements reflecting the highest standards for design of control measures, implementation and public engagement And here are a few areas we think uh, need clarification in this permit and um, our recommendations. Um, so as, as we've said many times, New Jersey Future regards green infrastructure as an integral stormwater management practice and an essential climate resilient solution that has benefits for CSO volume reduction and water quality improvement. CSO alternatives, including green infrastructure, are important components in achieving 85% capture of combined sewage collected during uh, wet weather. Our recommendation and questions include um, that uh, NJDP uh, should prioritize controls and projects based on the impact of CSO volume reduction and water quality improvements, including well-designed green infrastructure. 
The department should provide additional guidance for permittees to ensure that high impact green infrastructure is considered as part of gray infrastructure projects to address both solutions simultaneously and achieve uh, economies of scale while ensuring affordability to ratepayers. And we noticed there were quite a few uh, gray infrastructure projects in these permits, which is great. So again, is there an opportunity to take a step back and see how green infrastructure might be built and designed simultaneously? Uh, the permittees should explore conducting a green infrastructure feasibility study to determine uh, locations with a large amount of impervious cover that might benefit from implementation of green infrastructure projects to address flooding. Um, and uh, NJDP must ensure that the benefit from green infrastructure pilot program that you mentioned um, be maximized by accelerating timelines. The permittee uh, should work collaboratively with the community to identify locations for green infrastructure projects to maximize this community benefit. And uh, NJDP should require the permittee to monitor and track the impact of CSOs of green infrastructure projects implemented by the permittees, such as the uh, Trumbull Street Stormwater Control Project to ensure they are being properly installed and maintained. Um, and so that we understand the impact of green infrastructure uh, on the outcomes. As New Jersey experiences the impacts of climate change, it's imperative to plan ahead in order to reduce flooding issues and create climate resilient communities. It's essential to use updated and accurate data for, to protect the environment, infrastructure, public health and community members. NJDP should provide clear guidance on how the NJ Pact rules will be incorporated into this permit, especially with the new inland uh, flood uh, uh, rules that were announced. Future hydraulic and uh, hydrologic and hydraulic modeling should be updated based on precipitation data and modeling from the Northeast Regional Climate Center released in November 2021. And the department should require that the permittee documents and reports on how climate change impacts CSO removals. And fi finally, if I still have time, um, the permit should not extend the timeline for requirements to reduce rate increases as this will extend the time that the community faces environmental and public health issues. Um, there's some concern about this, the timeline reaching all the way out to 2043. Uh, NJDP should provide more detailed guidance to permit holders around other cost-effective innovative finance opportunities to help finance this work equitably, such as water bank low interest uh, loan programs, utilizing more infrastructure grants, green, sorry, green infrastructure grants, uh, building a stormwater utility. Um, NJDP should accelerate the timeline working with the permit holders to implement the EPA's Clean Water Act Financial Capability Assessment Guide to the maximum extent possible, including taking advantage of the technical uh, assistance funding that is available. NJDP should incorporate a review of the permittee's financial capability analysis and the permittee should clarify how affordability for lower income households is reflected in the analysis. Um, and thank you for agreeing to create a separate guidance um, in the Guttenberg North Bergen permit for public engagement uh, to strengthen and clarify those components. That's excellent. Um, and we assume this will also be utilized for this permit we recommend that you include the public in the design and finalization of that um, guidance um, at, and, and also to please um, complete that guidance at the same time as you finalize this permit so the permit holder can hit the ground running um, with that excellent new guidance. Thank you so much. All right, thank you for your comments. Uh, the next speaker we have is uh, Michelle Langa. Please, uh, if you're ready, go ahead. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm going to be echoing a little bit of what Suzanne just said um, on behalf of Sewage Free Streets and Rivers. Um, so we were also glad to read in the final permit for Guttenberg and North Bergen that the DEP is developing a separate guidance document around public engagement. And uh, we assume that will apply to all of the permits and request that DEP include stakeholders in the development of or the review of this guidance before it's finalized. Uh, having the public's input on a document that will guide public involvement is critical to, to its success. Um, we also request that this guidance be developed um, with expediency yeah. and before any subsequent permits are finalized. 
Uh, this will give uh, towns and permit holders time to prepare and hit the ground running to work towards their implementation dates. Um, speaking on um, the timeline, uh, there are 29 CSO outfalls in the water body surrounding Elizabeth and associated with this current permit that we're uh, meeting on. Uh, that means these water bodies are being impacted by pollution more than um, others locally in the region. Um, while we're glad to see that a reasonable amount of the activity in the permit, uh, including the construction, um, design of additional construction, which I know is uh, over $26 million worth of investment, uh, is occurring in the first five years. Uh, it is disappointing to see that the annual average combined sewer um, reduction is only landing at about 69% in that five years. Um, and that the area will have to wait until 2045 to reach the minimum 85% capture required. Um, this delay will negatively impact local water bodies, uh, those people using these water bodies for recreation and other reasons, and also increase the potential for continued combined sewer flooding into the streets and homes for another 22 years, roughly. Um, so it would be really uh, beneficial, I think, to everybody in the region to see if there's a way to um, reduce that timeline a little bit. Um, that also further underscores the need to accelerate CSO reduc reduction projects that are currently slated in this permit to be constructed by 2045 and to shorten the timeline substantially. Specifically, the planned projects that should be implemented much sooner include the upper westerly interceptor upgrade and the Morris Avenue siphon upgrade and the new wet weather pump stations expected to be completed in the year 2030. 39 to 2043 uh, seems insane to be talking about dates that far in advance um, just generally but I know that um, these projects do take time um, speaking to financing uh, if financing is a hindrance to shortening timelines while ensuring affordability uh, there are new federal funding opportunities released since the long-term control plans were drafted that permit holders can take advantage of through the water bank uh, in addition, there are technical support funding from EPA that permit holders can take advantage of to help them develop a stronger financial capability analysis. Uh, this is described and recommended in EPA's recent 2023 Clean Water Act Financial Capability Assessment Guidance. And we uh, really hope that the permittees take a look at this uh, documentation and, and use it to help them shorten some timelines while also reducing the impact to ratepayers. Uh, in the case of this permit, uh, would it be possible to ask joint meeting uh, Union counties uh, to undertake this project for the city of Elizabeth so that costs would be spread out over all of joint meetings customers and not just Elizabeth? In this way, it would have the same uh, total cost spread out over more users, and those users would also have a higher median household income. That ought to improve affordability calculation considerably. Um, moving down. Um, to sort of wrap up, I know I'm getting shorter on time. Um, we know that the organizations and community members in Elizabeth are very active, especially in proposing and planning green infrastructure projects. Uh, we urge you to work with the permit holder to leverage their ex expertise and support to accelerate implementation of green infrastructure. That's uh, another avenue for shortening timelines toward achieving the minimum 85% capture goal in a shorter time frame. Uh, moreover, with so many gray infrastructure projects being implemented, has the permit holder evaluated the opportunities to install green infrastructure simultaneously uh, and use that to achieve a sort of economy of scale um, in getting projects and reduction done at the same time? And to just wrap up, and anything that I've left out will include in our written permit uh, comments. Uh, with the new inland foot rule that was just announced, uh, will a permit holder be required to adjust their current five-year plan to include the newer precipitation models and projections? Uh, I know questions are not going to be answered right now, but that is an important one to look at going forward, especially since we're sort of mid um, CSO permitting happening um, over the next several months to a year. Um, can I review the projected CSO removals and whether current projections of precipitation and sea level rise due to climate change affect the implementation plan and adjust as needed? For that and uh yep, that that is all for now so thank you very much for the opportunity to testify all right thank you for your comments uh next person i have in the queue is rachel don davis if you're ready please go yes can you hear me yes great good morning everybody my name is rachel davis 
R-A-C-H-E-L-D-A-B-I-S. I'm the public policy and justice organizer for Water Spirit. For 25 years, Water Spirit has offered programming and advocacy centered on water as a source and sustainer of all life. Without sacred water, there is no life, and without justice, there can be no peace. I'm speaking on behalf of Water Spirit's sister ministry organizations centered in this region, as well as our thousands of members throughout the state, the Northeast, and world. I have communicated before on this topic ad nauseum with NJDEP. Thank you for this opportunity. We are led by science and guided by spirit. As I usually share, I thought that that USA Today article back in November of 2021 covering Patterson's floods for 75 years and CSO dire issue would have been embarrassment enough having people's schools and homes both flooded with hazardous waste before the world for considerable investments to be made to fast track prevention of sewage filled streets and rivers. This is a global issue, but New Jersey is not in the same financial situation as Senegal. New Jersey had a budgetary surplus that could have been spent fixing CSOs and their effects throughout the state in their entirety. The budget deadline, as we all know, is the 30th of this month. Today, we are specifically requesting a reduction of that 2045, which is what I thought, uh, projection completion date timeline. So the outcomes are more real realistically lining up with what we might have of a livable future if we stop funding our demise. So 10 years versus 25 years. To make the timeline shortened is to ensure affordability for all residents in this community or area of concern, because we don't want to make it seem like it's a small um, or trivial in any way. Other states are doing this, and New Jersey can too. Where there's a will, there are ways. Water Spear partnered with New Jersey League of Conservation Voters through a grant from Watershed Institute to put out a webinar series linking environmental injustice and opportunities for sound stormwater management and green infrastructure planning, specifically in New Jersey, and incorporating examples outside of New Jersey. Water Spirit urges that you take advantage of new financing mechanisms through the Water Bank to help shorten such timelines, and we believe you can do this. To establish a way forward, trust must be factored in. Water Spirit's network urges it is imperative for infected areas, for affected residents across communities, but especially those living in overburdened areas of most concern, are communicated with considerably and creatively throughout the entire permitting process, especially during final decision making. Public meetings must be physically accessible and communicated across languages to all in the specific geographic region. Prevention will help, and we have 400 Rutgers University Cooperative Extension Water Resources Program uh, green infrastructure champions throughout the entire state, and I say this often. I'm a green infrastructure champion. These people have heart and want to help to realize the benefits of incorporating green infrastructure into the gray infrastructure solutions really requires planning now ahead of time. New Jersey DEP must also clearly incorporate the most up to date scientific climate crisis modeling, including projected rainfall models into the permits such that they are adaptive to our ever changing circumstances. We will provide written comments as well, but finally, People in this state want to help each other, and I know NGDEP is hearing this as you travel across hearing from various areas of the state through the perspective of environmental injustice. You're increasing listening sessions, and we urge that you keep this spirit up, the spirit of the environmental justice cumulative impacts law. We wish you the ongoing strength and courage to foster trust and source solutions from affected residents who know their areas best and local people who are eager to be of use and help during climate emergency. Thank you. All right, thank you for your comments. Uh, next in the queue is Nicole Miller. If you're ready, please go ahead. Hello, um, thank you, uh, Joe. I apologize, my camera is not working. Teams isn't working for my camera, so I'm sorry I have to be off camera right now. Um, but uh, my name is Nicole Miller. I'm uh, representing Newark Dig and Sweet Free Streets and Rivers. Um, and of course, I want to thank uh, Joe and Susan and the entire um, team for their hard work. We know it's been um, uh, nearly an intense task <laughs> to go over all of these permits for the past uh, seven years, um, the process of developing long-term control plans, and of course, reviewing the permits. And we're very gratified to see um, the continuous rollout of uh, the permits. Um, 
starting um, in December. Um, we're already on our third set. Um, and so we're happy um, that the process has been continuing. Um, and we thank you for your efforts. Um, also, we uh, do want to thank you for listening to advocates. It's very obvious that you've been listening and taking in uh, uh, the things that have been said uh, where possible. Um, we did review the, um, the final Guttenberg um, North Bergen permit and saw several of our recommendations. And we do hope that those uh, recommendations will be um, seen at the draft stage in future permits when possible. Um, regarding the outreach uh, guidance and the financial uh, guidance as well, we do hope that the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection will release the guidance either con concurrently when possible or as soon as possible within um, within a six to 12 month period, uh, if possible, because uh, 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 for the last permit cycle in 2015, um, public participation guidance was not released for two years. Um, and that was that did have a deleterious effect on the public participation um, and the outreach um, uh, effect that the permittees had. So we do, uh, I do believe that the permittees follow NJDP's guidelines um, and, and recommendations. And so at the sooner that that guidance can be released, the better. Um, also, excuse me, speaking of timing, um, we do encourage the DEP to encourage um, uh, the permittees to explore innovative funding. There is new funding available that was not available when the long-term control plans were developed. And so though there are options now that were not uh, in effect for the long-term control plan. We're not asking that the plans be delayed, but we are asking that financing be reviewed because as has been stated, and there will be some redundancy, as has been stated, there are 26 outfalls that are affecting thousands, if not millions of people and um, in their uh, uh, the water that they access in their recreation. And we do hope that we will not be pushing um, out cleaning these waters until 2045, uh, when there are opportunities for us to fast track that um, when possible. And so um, uh, as the EPA has released uh, financing guidelines, we hope that NGDP will also uh, encourage permittees to take a look at those innovative funding funding strategies and um, to uh, share the um, technical assistance needed for, um, for permittees to access those funds. Um, also, <clears throat> We do, similarly, again, about timing, we encourage DEP to uh, uh, work with permit holders to fast track the green infrastructure implementation um, up more towards the beginning of the five-year process, the first five-year process. Um, we uh, we have lots of ex uh, uh, evidence to show that green infrastructure, um, while not a 100% solution, can help ameliorate the street level flooding problems and the stormwater related CSO um, events. Uh, and so putting those up front is a lower cost, um, high, a lower cost, high impact, not low cost, but lower cost, high impact um, uh, opportunity for uh, communities to see real, uh, real change. And also for there to be um, additional benefits to the community as well. Um, and so moving GI up higher in the timeline um, should be something that NGDP encourages across the board. Um, additionally, uh, uh, as has been mentioned with the release of the new infl inland flood protection rules, um, we do hope that NGDP will work with the permittees to adjust the precipitation models. We do not want projects to spend potentially billions of dollars go into the ground and not be able to meet um, the coming climate crises that we uh, that even your own department is predicting um, in the next 20 to 30 years. And so um, <clears throat> even sometimes before the projects are complete, uh, they'll already not be meeting the um, the need. And so we do hope that those pre precipitation models and the climate projection models are updated regularly. Um, if this isn't um, something that's capable of being done in this first five years, we do hope that NGDP will um, make that as a, a standing um, uh, requirement for each new five-year permit. Um, 
and is that it? And uh, Newark Dig will, along with Sewage Free Streets and Rivers, be um, uh, submitting written comments uh, to go into a little bit more depth. And we, again, thank you for holding this opportunity and um, for making it more inclusive with every round. Thank you. All right, thank you for your comments. Uh, next in the queue, I see Tracy Parham. If you're ready, please go ahead. Okay, one moment. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present a brief statement. Uh, can I be heard? Yes. Okay, good, thank you. My name is Tracy Parham, T-R-A-C-Y, P is in Peter, A-R-H-A-M. I represent Future City Incorporated in Elizabeth. I am also a, a voting resident of the city of Elizabeth. As a project person for FCI, I have spent many years participating in multilingual public information sessions, demonstrating and reporting on how to keep our CSOs clear so that the rain can go down the drain. Residents must link the climate change impact to our CSOs in our city. Any busy, resident can download a weather app uh, on their phone in the language they speak to keep informed of potential flooding and to and how to prepare for it a linguistically available weather app is also an important public health tool in for air mo air quality monitoring our state and local governments need to to make sure our residents to make our residents informed proactive partners in, in mitigating the impact of climate change and CSOs. Thank you for the time. All right, thank you for your comments. Uh, I don't see any other names in the queue right now, so we'll just uh, be on hold for about uh, five or 10 minutes. And uh, if someone comes in and wants to testify, then we'll, we'll allow them. All right, um, let's say at 11 o'clock, I'll uh, check back in. Joe, we have a hand raised, Suzanne. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> Suzanne, <laughs> please go right ahead. That's OK, thank you. Just a quick thought. Since you're developing this guidance around public um, engagement, a separate guidance, just wondering if, and maybe you already have this, but if there's a way to create a separate guidance document around financing and affordability, again, given what so many of us are saying, um, that there has been new funding that's come about since the long-term control plans, even stormwater utilities have taken on a new emphasis. So much more research has been done around that. Um, just wondering if this might be also a nice time to have just a separate guidance document, maybe it's a living document that continuously can be updated, but just a, a you know, a repository, one place to go 
um, because it can get confusing with the different elements of um, financing and that talks about the um, EPA's guidance, the affordability calculation, how to do an alternative affordability calculation. Anyway, I'm not a financing expert, but it just seems that this is a repeating theme and maybe um, a separate guidance document would be helpful. So um, that's a recommendation and maybe a question as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the comment. We will certainly address it in the response to comments document when we issue our final decision. All right, everyone, I'm showing 11 o'clock uh, on my uh, computer. So I think at this point, everyone has had a chance who wants to to comment has done so. And of course, we've had repeat comments as well, which is fine. Um, I don't see any other activity. So uh, at this point, um, unless anyone has a, a final comment they want to make, I'm going to close the hearing. All right, I don't see any comments, so. Uh, we will close the hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.